First of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Olivot, Professor Cecchi, for the kind invitation to this uh, excellent meeting. And as, as uh, the previous presentation, my presentation will uh, uh, focus mainly on cardiac imaging, uh, namely uh, cardiac MRI, what, what cardiac MRI can do in, uh, um, in, uh, in a patient with cardiomyopathy, with the particular attention to, to um, uh, the remodeling of cardiac interstitium, a new technique that uh, probably uh, could be useful for studying uh, cardiomyopathies. I would like also to apologize for this uh, <laughs> simplistic uh, uh, presentation of myocardial fibrosis in cardiomyopathy, but just to resume, um, we can have a reparative myocardial fibrosis or the form of this interstitial diffuse myocardial fibrosis. Uh, the first uh, reparative form is normally caused uh, by myocardial damage. It doesn't matter what type of damage it is, uh, it's a stereotype response to a damage uh, which causes uh, cardiomyocyte necrosis or apoptosis, then healing process occur, and the reparative myocardial fibrosis uh, 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 appears. Um, as uh, you probably know, most of you, um, we can detect gross reparative myocardial fibrosis with cardiac MRI just using lytic gadolinium enhancement technique. Uh, after a bolus of injection of a gadolinium-based contrast agent, we see that in the fibrotic myocardium there is a, the, um, an impaired washing phase, but most importantly, there is a delayed washout phase of uh, gadolinium. And in the fibrotic myocardium, like in this case of myocardial infarction and the reparative fibrosis due to ischemic insult, as we can see, uh, uh, the fibrotic tissue retain gadolinium so, if uh, we uh, apply this technique uh, in the, this interval time, uh, we see the fibrotic myocardium hyperintense. There is a late gadolinium announcement. The normal remote myocardium is dark, is null, artificially null by an inversion recovery pulse. And uh, the signal intensity difference between the fibrotic myocardium and the normal myocardium is up 500% with an implant spatial resolution of about 2 millimeters. So excellent spatial resolution, excellent contrast between pathologic myocardium and normal myocardium. As you, but it's also important to notice that in this interval time, between 12 minutes and 15 minutes after contrast injection, there is a steady state between the vascular component and also the normal remote myocardium. So there is, a, 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 let's say, an equilibrium between the blood pool and the normal myocardium. So keep in mind this um, for the further uh, discussion, and we will see why. Uh, as you already know, um, late gadolinium announcement, there are some evidence that uh, late gadolinium announcement represent a reparative myocardial fibrosis in cardiomyopathy, in hypertrophic or in dilated cardiomyopathy. There is a, a good agreement between uh, LG findings and reparative myocardial fibrosis detected on histologies with uh, uh, serious red uh, dye. Uh, in this recent paper, the Harai from NIH showed that it's an interesting paper because it's based on a model of ischemic cardiomyopathy, but with very high spatial resolution of late gadolinium enhancement using a 7 Tesla system. And as you can see in the fibrotic myocardium where the infarct uh, was uh, uh, produced, uh, uh, ex vivo LG can f uh, nicely show the reparative process of fibrosis, but also uh, can show the, uh, the, the very small strands of, uh, of uh, fibrosis between uh, the muscle bands. But uh, let's say that uh, this technique in the clinical practice doesn't allow to detect the interstitial form of myocardial fibrosis. Um, 
There are some data on uh, LGE and uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. We know that uh, um, patients with, uh, with uh, LGE and dilated cardiomyopathy has, has got uh, a worse outcome, and it, it is an independent predictor of uh, worse outcome, and the same can be said about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But what about interstitial form of uh, uh, myocardial fibrosis? Uh, here, the pathophysiology is, is different, is a, a reactive form of myocardial fibrosis due to the activation of RAS system, inflammation, plus ge genetic factor. This uh, factor account for extracellular matrix remodeling, which, uh, um, which is um, basic, basically an increase of collagen production with a, a um, decrease of degradation. And uh, as we uh, um, know that there is uh, this, uh, this yields an impairment of myocyte contractility, impair vasomotor function, mainly due to the per perivascular fibrosis and increase LV stiffness. But what is uh, important to notice that in the uh, experimental model of um, uh, hypertensive nephrogenic um, 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 due to the ligation of monolateral ligation of uh, um, uh, renal artery, we know that uh, also um, this process precedes what is called the more diffuse and the reparative process of fibrosis and the dysfunction of the ventricle. So it's a, it's a can be regarded as an intermediate phenotype, which can be modified or even reverted by therapy. So can we quantify, detect a diffuse interstitial myocardial fibrosis with cardiac MRI? Probably yes, there are some, some, some data piling up uh, showing that it is possible. Uh, mm, after the bolus injection, as we saw before, and at the steady state, in the normal interstitium, you see they get, there is a, a small amount of gadolinium. Gadolinium is a, an extracellular, extravascular, extracellular uh, contrast agent. So normally, you find in the interstitium at the steady state. In the diffuse interstitial fibrosis, there is an interstitium, the cardiac interstitium expands, so there is an inc increased volume of cardiac interstitium as compared to the, to the myocyte. And of course, at the steady state, there is an increased concentration of gadolinium. So using few measurements, which are T1 value, so we have to calculate the T1 of myocardium and the blood pool before and after the balls of, of uh, gadolinium, but at a steady state. This is a quantitative measurement, which reflects uh, an intrinsic property of myocardium and the blood pool. So it's not routinely done with, uh, in, in a clinical cardiac MRI, but can be now easily done with a new sequence. And then we need another measurement, which is hematocrit. And uh, then a, few, a couple of formula which uh, uh, allow to detect what is called extracellular volume fraction. So uh, basically, uh, um, it's not a complicated formula, believe me, but I want to show to you that this formula takes into account what is called, what it happens in the myocardium, as we can see, and in the blood pool. So, uh, let's say it's correct for confounding factor, which can be due to the type of gadolinium that we use, the dose that we use, and the clearance of gadolinium from the body and the volume of distribution. So uh, uh, um, then by using this formula, so we um, uh, multi multiply the coefficient of distribution of gadolinium at a steady state by uh, one minus hematocrito, we can calculate extracellular volume fraction, which is in the range in the normal of 20%, uh, representing the cardiac interstitium. In this uh, paper from the group of London, uh, they actually compare this measurement what, uh, with the coll collagen volume fraction uh, detected on, um, on uh, this basal septum in patients undergoing myectomy because of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or in patients undergoing to heart valve uh, uh, um, replacement because of aortic stenosis. And so you can see that there is a very good correlation between the two measurements with an R square of about 0 0.8. 
And we didn't have the sequence for the calculation of T1, so we developed this sequence, which has been rec uh, recently published. Here it is the, the performance of our sequence versus the gold standard at a different RR interval, because it's important to have an accurate measurement according to the heart rate. And as you can see, there is a good agreement between our sequence and the gold standard. So, uh, now let's move to the cardiolaminopathy. As you know, to the uh, lamingin uh, has got three main uh, encoding region. Uh, over then three f uh, 340 mutations have been described with uh, at least 16 different phenotypes ranging from progeria to isolated dilated cardiomyopathy with the conduction system abnormality. Lamine is uh, our um, type 5 intermediate filament protein, which creates a mesh between the inner uh, membrane of the nucleus and the hemochromatin. And the, um, they um, are involved in important function, mainly in the structure of the nuclear um, um, the nuclear envelope, but also has got some important functional property like transcription regulation, nuclear pore function, and uh, hemocratin organization. In patients with cardiolaminopathy, so isolated uh, um, involvement of the heart, they account for uh, uh, about up to 9% of dilated cardiomyopathy. But it's important to notice that these patients has got a worse outcome as compared to patients without lamine DCM phenotype. So uh, and, um, about 70% of events at the median time of five years follow up, mostly uh, due to life treating uh, uh, ventricular arrhythmia and one third due to progressive heart failure. It uh, has got an autosomic dominant inheritance with uh, variable penetrance. Uh, the DCM phenotype is often associated with uh, conduction system abnormalities, supraventricular arrhythmia, mostly atrial fibrillation, life ventricular arrhythmia, and uh, can, uh, we can also have a skeletal muscle involvement. But it's important to notice that sudden cardiac death may be the first clinical manifestation, even in the absence of LV dysfunction. There is no uh, precise, uh, precise evidence of the mechanism uh, um, that uh, bring from the, the mutation to the phenotype. But uh, in, uh, an interesting paper showed that a particular mutation of this gene is associated with diffuse extensive myocardial fibrosis with early disease onset, uh, particularly in malignant cause. Based on this premise, premise we uh, decided to study the, this patient, myocardial fibrosis with cardiac MRI, in six programs and 13 relatives uh, carrier of a lamine mutation, which uh, um, this patient under, underwent to uh, inclusive uh, uh, clinical and instrumental evaluation plus cardiac MRI. And the cardiac MRI findings were compared to those obtained in 16 healthy volunteers and 18 idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy patients with moderate imperial V ejection fraction. The cardiac MRI protocol was quite quite straightforward. The, we uh, use CNA imaging to assess uh, LV volume and function. Pre and post contrast T1 mapping for, um, to measure the T1 of blood pool and myocardium before and after uh, bolus injection. And uh, the, here we have our population, 19 patients, so very small, small population actually. Uh, some patients, you can see the, the LV ejection fraction was impaired just in few patients. Most of them has got a normal ejection fraction, but uh, seven patients has got non-sustained ventricular tachycardia and three of them also sustained ventricular tachycardia, atrioventricular block, left bundle branch block. Uh, what about uh, replacement myocardial fibrosis? We didn't find any difference as in comparison to idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. So the prevalence and pattern of reparative uh, myocardial fibrosis, late gadolinium enhancement pattern, was similar in the two population. What we noticed that uh, the uh, late gadolinium enhancement was more, more often seen in patients with already LV dysfunction or a, a sign of cardiac involvement. When we move to extracellular volume fraction, as we can see, 
uh, uh, in lamin mutation curve, it was increased, not only in comparison to the normal subject, but also in comparison to idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. And here we have the result, also at the postdoc analysis, patient with the lamin mutation carrier has got an increased extracellular volume fraction as compared to normal and to idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy patient. And importantly, this result was maintained when the analysis was limited to lamin mutation carrier without LG or without evidence of cardiac involvement. So we can speculate, it's just an hypothesis generating study, that we can speculate that it is an early manifestation, a subclinical manifestation of the, uh, of the disease, at least at cardiac level. Uh, we also did uh, ROC curve in uh, lamine mutation carrier and control, so we found that uh, this cutoff volume for extracellular volume fraction has got uh, a good s sensitivity and specificity. Uh, just uh, the last few slides to show to you that uh, already uh, this, in this recent paper there are already data on short-term uh, mortality. Uh, using this uh, approach, this technique. Uh, as you can see, patients with the uh, highest third of extracellular volume fraction has got worse prognosis as compared to those with uh, middle and the lowest third tile, and this, uh, uh, this was confirmed at multivariate Cox regression analysis. So just to conclude and to summarize, uh, myocardial ACV, um, myocardial ACV can be calculated with cardiac MRI, appear to be a promising measure of extracellular matrix expansion, but it's still under investigation, a further study of course are needed. It's also important to keep in mind that even though uh, interstitial, diffuse interstitial myocardial fibrosis is the main cause of it, expansion of cardiac interstitium, there are other causes like myocardial, ed myocardial edema or amyloidosis that can expand the cardiac interstitium. An increase of uh, <clears throat> in myocardial ECV uh, may potentially indicate an intermediate phenotype in uh, the process of fibrosis, which can be modulated or reverted by therapy. Of course, further studies are needed to prove the value and the clinical utility of this marker. Thank you for your attention. Sofia Bilinska Warsaw, thank you for elegant presentation. We also study quite a lot of patients with laminopathies. You have severe changes, but dependent on the type of mutation. Do you have you related the finding your findings to the type of mutation? No, because um, too small. Uh, the study population was too small. We are increasing the number of uh, patients studied with this technique but actually they are too small. We have uh, patients, we have relatives who have normal ejection fractions, and these re relatives have uh, no LGE, but when you put them, uh, 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 just two, I have such an experience on exercise stress test, they develop ischemia uh, on stress test. So it may be a marker, preclinical marker of uh, subsequent uh, LGE, like the fibrosis. But uh, it depends on the type of, of mutation, this uh, changes in uh, patients who have a normal ejection fraction, at, at least in, in our uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. It's also in the study that I showed before, um, I mean, in that study there was a, a particular type of mutation that, which was associated with uh, uh, extensive uh, uh, myocardial fibrosis. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, as you say, probably um, we need more patients to, to make this relation between genotype and phenotype. <laughs>